Welcome to WaterfrontAuthority.com. I'm Trey Zipperer. In this segment, we cover boating as one of the most important value drivers for waterfront property. If you know anything about boats, you know that the price tag of a boat increases significantly with every added foot in length. The maximum size boat a property will accommodate is a key waterfront value driver. The maximum size boat is a factor of water depth at mean low tide, minimum depth between the property and the Gulf of Mexico, waterway width, linear feet of straight water frontage, bridge heights between the property and the Gulf of Mexico, dockage side setbacks, riparian rights, and deed restrictions. The first question we ask waterfront buyers is, how big is your boat? What we mean is, what does your boat draft? How much water depth do you need to operate your boat at low tide? How long is your boat? How wide is your boat? And how tall is your boat? Water depth at mean low tide is extremely important because we don't want your props hitting the bottom and you certainly don't want to run aground. Waterfront property is about boating convenience, so who wants to wait for the right tides to operate your boat? Water depth isn't just about at the dock, it is about the minimum depth at mean low tide all the way to the Gulf of Mexico. It doesn't matter if your canal is six feet deep, if the channel to the Gulf is silted in to only two feet deep at some point along your route. Waterway width determines the maximum width of your boat because boats and docks are only allowed to protrude a maximum of 25% of the waterway width. You have to do the math taking into account the distance from the seawall to the edge of your dock, the width of the boat lift pilings, the width of your boat, also known as the beam, the space needed between your boat and the boat lift pilings, and the dock or dolphin pilings on the outside of your boat from the seawall. For example, let's assume your boat has a nine foot beam. You will need at least one feet on either side of your boat for ingress and egress between your boat lift pilings. Each boat lift piling is one foot wide. That means your boat lift and pilings consume 13 feet. The water depth is shallowest at the edge of the seawall because the canal gets gradually deeper toward the center of the canal. Let's assume you need four feet of dock attached to your seawall to position your boat lift over sufficient water depth. Now you have a total of 17 feet. Assuming you want to wrap around dock to enable access to the outside of your boat, and you want four feet of dock on the outside, you now need to extend your dock to a total of 21 feet into the waterway. Because you are limited to 25% of the width of the waterway for your dockage, in this case, the canal would need to be 84 feet wide. A combination of linear feet of straight seawall, dock side setbacks, deed restrictions, and riparian rights determine the maximum length of a boat to be moored at the property. Bridges and overhead power lines between the property and the Gulf of Mexico restrict the maximum height of boats that a property can accommodate. The term sailboat access is a combination of deep water and no overhead restrictions. Sailboat keels can extend beyond six feet in depth and some masts exceed 50 feet in height. The value of existing dockage comes into play, but dockage can be altered to fit your boating needs. If you need help valuing a waterfront property today, give me a call or send me an email. I'm Trey Zipperer, your waterfront authority.